Resident Evil 4. Definitely not shy of re-releasing titles, Capcom has once again released Resident Evil 4 on the PC, this time dubbing it the Ultimate Edition. With the claims of full 1080p updated textures and 60 frames per second, is this game really worth paying the $20 price tag for the 10th iteration of the game? Find out in our review. Most people who have already played Resident Evil 4 know the story, but for those who don't, I'll give a brief recap. The story takes place six years after the events of Resident Evil 2, where Leon S. Kennedy is in charge of rescuing the president's daughter, Ashley Graham. This, of course, in typical Resident Evil fashion, isn't all it's cracked up to be and evolves into something much bigger. Throughout the story, you'll meet a couple of familiar faces such as Ada Wong and Jack Krauser, along with a couple of new ones such as Hunnigan and Louis Sarah. Combine these with the main villains of the game, Osmod Sadler and Raymond Salazar, you'll have a pretty interesting cast that really pushes along the story, one that sets up the foundation for future Resident Evil games. Unlike previous Resident Evil games where you had a fixed camera angle position, Resident Evil 4 introduces a over-the-shoulder third-person view. Because of this change of perspective, combat has changed drastically from Resident Evil games in the past. You can now aim and shoot where you please, which becomes very useful in this game because of the new enemies you'll be facing. Not only has the combat and the camera angles changed, the way that items and weapons are acquired has changed as well too. Now while you still can find them throughout most levels, the majority of items and weapons will be bought from someone simply known as the Merchant. Along with buying items, you are no longer restricted to the 6 or 8 slot weapons in previous Resident Evil games. You are now given an expandable case to which you can carry a majority of weapons, items, healing items, bullets, and other things. Having the ability to store multiple weapons and ammo and health items is really great in this game because it alleviates a lot of the backtracking that was in previous Resident Evil titles. And here lies the weakest part of Resident Evil 4, the escort mission. Throughout most chapters of the game, you are in charge of escorting Ashley making sure she doesn't die or get captured. While you can issue commands and give her health items to make sure she doesn't die, there will be times where she'll get one-shotted out of nowhere, causing massive frustration throughout the game, especially when you've made good progress. It just happens to be one of those things where it's not hard, but it's frustrating. When comparing Resident Evil 4 Ultimate Edition to its counterparts, this is definitely the best looking version. Unlike the past PC port, this one actually has options that you expect from current PC games, such as anti-aliasing, motion blur, and shadow quality. The updated textures and graphics are a nice touch and actually do add a bit more to the overall scare factor that Resident Evil 4 can provide, especially in the later levels. In terms of sound, nothing has been updated like the graphics, but it still adds to the overall atmosphere, especially in the later levels such as the castle where you can hear the moans and groans of your enemies coming after you. Save for running at 60 frames per second and having upgraded textures, there's not really much in this Ultimate Edition that adds to the overall experience and presentation to Resident Evil 4. Whether or not you should pick up Resident Evil 4, you have to ask yourself this question. Have I played Resident Evil 4 before? If you have not played it, then yes, definitely pick up this game for it is the best version, it is the definitive version of Resident Evil 4. For everyone else that has played Resident Evil 4 before, I cannot recommend this title to you. Yes, it is only $20, but it is the exact same game that came out in 2005. There is nothing new that adds to the overall experience other than updated textures and running to 60 frames per second. And even then, there's nothing new story-wise, gameplay-wise that is in this game that you have not played before. For more game-related news and reviews, be sure to check out PutThatBack.org.